Master of Magic. Your education is not complete until you've seen Misto. Step this way, folks. See Misto, the world's greatest magician. Huh? There you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, here we, we have an ordinary loaf of homemade bread. Watch closely. Imagine that, a whole loaf of bread disappearing before our very eyes. Oh, madam, that is nothing. You far excel me at making bread disappear. Well, what are you talking about? I can't make anything disappear. No. Watch this. There, madam, is the amount of bread that you cause to disappear every week. You must be crazy. There isn't that much bread in the world. There's that much less bread in the world every week through household waste. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is horrifying fact that waste, sheer, needless, unforgivable waste, accounts each week for more than two million loaves of bread, bread that is ammunition as vital as bullets in this war. Such waste must stop. Well, I'd never thought of it that way. Friends, we're bringing you this brief presentation of so-called magic in order to make clear to all of us a matter of importance impossible to exaggerate. Our little tricks are amusing, we hope, and in their place on the stage, quite in order. But our purpose is to emphasize the fact that the stage is the only place where tricks will work. There's no magic that can stretch one loaf of bread into two or make a whole side of beef out of one small steak. So we'd like to tell you something about this problem that must be licked. Not by the people in this theater or in this county or in this state, but by every living human in America. Let's consider our food from the plow to the table. <laughs> produce crops by this method, for instance, we'd have no crop worries, but we can't. Our farmers have achieved miracles of production, but they can't do it by magic. Now, this is a sample of the back-breaking work that has made our record food production possible. So huge that the supply set aside for civilians is as large as they had before the war in spite of vast military needs. Now, here are a couple of young people who helped out on a farm this summer. They and thousands of others like them helped increase our production. But farm help was and is scarce. If the farmer could do this, and this, it would again be easy. But this is fantasy, and fantasy gets in no crops. Thank you. Now here, as you see, is a tomato, just an average sized tomato. This is how we've treated it. By waste, by failure to handle food as the precious vital weapon that it is, we've shrunk our available food supply. What was wasted last year would have fed our armed forces. Now, now think of that. What was wasted last year would have fed our armed forces. Now, that's like throwing victory into the garbage can. Now here's something we all like, I know. Money. Oh, money. <laughs> And yet, you know, it's really only good for what it represents. So, one trick we couldn't do without is this. Have a dab. That effect is what we all do every time we take the money we've earned, go down and buy food with it at the corner grocery. You know, I have a friend who says, I say this racing is a bunk. So is price control. I'm making plenty of dough now. What do I care about prices? If it wasn't for rationing, I'd be eating like a king. There's plenty of food in America. Well, that, that last statement is correct anyway. There is plenty of food in America. Plenty for everybody if we handle it right. Now, we've got to do two things. One's rationing. The other's price control. Come on, I'll show you where you'd be without them. Is this the only steak you have? Yep. Uh, uh, how much is it? A dollar sixty. Fine, I'll take it. Hold on a minute here. If that's the only steak you've got, I'll give two dollars for it. Well, now, wait a minute. I'll give you three dollars for it. Wrap it up. No, say, no, no. say, that's a mighty big piece of meat. Why not cut it up and give us each a share? Nothing doing. I'll take it all. Oh, no, no you no. don't. You needn't think you can bluff me. 
I'll give five dollars for it and take it all myself. Mabel's gonna give me the dickens. I'll give you ten dollars for it. I'll give you fifteen. What? I'll double that. Whipper <laughs> snapper, yeah. spendthrift. I guess I showed him try and bluff me, Willie. <laughs> yeah, but danged if I've ever seen an eighty-five dollar steak before. Yeah, sure. <laughs> And there you are. You got all the steak all right. The other fellow didn't get any, but how many steaks could you buy that way? And that's exactly what would happen if there were no rationing and no control of food prices. What it all boils down to, friends, is, is simply fair play. Let's look at it this way. Here's a typical American home. Being typically American, we can take it for granted that these are nice people, just such a home and such people as your own. I suppose this happened. Oh, excuse me. I want to ask if you'd share your dinner with me. Certainly, my boy. You can have anything we've got. Martha, get the boys some dinner. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we can't spare anything. Oh, well, that's all right. I'm awful sorry to bother you. Now, we know that's ridiculous. There isn't a home in America where that could happen. Certainly, we'd all share with any soldier. But we also must share with fellow citizens. Now, here's a bit of kitchen magic that would have helped that woman. Yes, that's kitchen magic. That bone could have made three bowls of delicious soup. Here's another kind of kitchen magic we'd like to tell you about. It's still in the realm of food saving, but a little roundabout. You've all seen one of these, I'm sure. You know, ring the bell, win a cigar, show how strong you are. Well... We'll come back to this in a minute. Here are all kinds of foods. Now, for example, we'll take one particular dish. Now, this dish. It's pretty palatable, but by itself can't provide the nourishment and strength giving we need. And this. It's the same thing again, but... The right food. And there are plenty of them. And the right combinations and quantities can mean an enormous lot to the health and strength of all Americans everywhere who are struggling to put all they can in this war to end wars for all time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we hope we've been able to highlight a few points of America's food situation for you. The whole picture is summed up in the sentence, food fights for freedom, and it does just as surely and just as effectively as the most dauntless division of American soldiers. It's the weapon that's in our hands here at home, and, and we can use it to mow down our enemies just as surely as though it were a machine gun, and it's easy. To sum the whole matter up in a few words, we must do this. We must, number one, produce. Help however we can to meet production goals. Work on a farm, raise a victory garden, and make production count by using food wisely. Number two, conserve. Avoid waste. Preserve fresh and perishable foods. Eat the right foods. Use plentiful foods for scarce. Preserve and avoid waste. Number three, share with our armed forces, our allies, and with each other through ration, cheerful ration. And fourth and perhaps most important, play square. Place the war first. Expect to have to make adjustments. Make them. Observe rationing and price rules. Thanks a lot. Good day.